Hey folks from the interwebs, let's check this bad girl out. Harley Davidson Sports Stress 22 edition. Yes, sir. Hey, I appreciate you supporting the channel. I do have some new merch in. If you want to wear one of these cool shirts and look spiffy while doing it and supporting a good cause, please check out the link in the description for our merchandise. So hey, it's Pete with Backdraft Bikes. We're with a 2022 Harley Davidson Sportster S. Super cool bike. Of course, we know this bike came out in 21. Brand new to Harley's lineup using the Revolution 2050 Max engine. It's kind of an interesting setup when you think about it. The bike itself has a lot of features on it that share the Pan America framework, but of course, it's a Sportster. So it's definitely something different than you're used to from Harley Davidson. Liquid cooled 1250 Rat Revolution Max engine, like I said, that's kind of the showpiece of this bike. I mean, this is kind of the deal why this bike is so popular. Harley's got it in three bikes right now. They've got it in the Pan America, they've got it in the Sportster S, and then they got like a baby Sportster, which we're gonna ride in a minute as well. But if you check this bike out, it is pretty cool. It's got a lot of neat features. Uh, just a couple on the styling cue, it is pretty nice. The Pipes are a little bit huge and junk, but everything's LED. Headlight looks good. Really obviously can't try it right now because it's light out. Uh, big fat tires. Radiator, obviously, because it is liquid cooled. Still got the same southbound rectifier battery setup, which I'm not a huge fan of, but it does put the weight down lower. Uh, single sided Brembo in the front. Kind of disappointing. Why didn't you do a double? But we'll try those brakes out, let you know how they work forward controls, forward shifting. And the platform itself is rather small. I'm six foot four. So I compare this to the same size as a regular Sportster and also like an Indian Scout. It, as far as the factory exhaust goes, it is quiet, but it isn't that bad. And the rear tire really sticks out there, almost like a fender delete, except it's got this weird looking deal that comes down and then goes over. So I probably try to unbolt that and relocate everything if I was gonna do that. Uh, belt drive, obviously, that's pretty cool. And then, of course, we've got the same styling again that the Pan America has with the external coil pack. There is another plug set up above uh, the fuel tank, so maintenance is a little tricky on that as well. Another interesting thing about this, if we come over to the front, uh, gas cap is oblonged, pretty, pretty cool, but there's no lock on this. Like, you just flip this open and it's open. Uh, the TFT, small, it's about four inches. This contains every single thing you're gonna need. I uh, can easily change it from high contrast to low contrast. And uh, nice, nice gauge sweep. I like the fact that you can see your RPMs on this and then it's got the, the miles per hour in the front, so that's kind of nice. This bike is completely full of fuel and you can see the range. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it's 92 miles, so not really a bike that's got a big fuel capacity. You're not, you're not gonna get anything over 100 depending on how you drive. A uh, little disappointed in that. Um, wet, this bike weighs 502 pounds. It's coming with the black option at 15,000. So you're, you're, you're spending some money on this bike as far as the Harley Davidson lineup goes. It's kind of right there, a little on the lower end actually, uh, but it's still quite a bit of money. And if you check out the bar end mirrors, they are looking pretty cool. I like those bar end mirrors. And of course, uh, same same controls that your Pan America would have. It's kind of their, uh, Harley's new platform. Cable operated clutch, everything is adjustable. Enough jibber jabber. Let's get on the road and see how this thing rides, shall we? All right, you may wonder why I left it running. I left it running on purpose because as soon as I pulled away from the, the guy that let me ride this, I got an error message on the thing saying there was no fob, so I didn't want it to die. I don't know if that's an error. I can't imagine that they would send the bike out without a fob. If you stall it, you have to start it. But not necessarily, I had the error message, so let's get going. Immediately, there's quite a bit of downward pressure on the handlebars on the front just because of the seating position. And of course, your forward facing controls are uh, very pronounced in this platform.
I will say this bike is rather small and it kind of is like a guided missile. It has a lot of power. Wow. Of course, it's that new. This is a new motor from Harley. I mean, it's it's fast. <laughs> a lot of power, even coming into the corners. I just did that at 65. Uh, no problems whatsoever. Holding the line, the bike feels the handle very well kind of like a sport bike should but it does feel again like a little bit of a guided missile it's fast and it wants to handle but it doesn't have the flickability that a normal street bike would have so I'm wondering if that's because of the wide tires it has I'm not sure I don't know This engine does phenomenal in the upper revs. It is not your traditional Harley-Davidson torque curve. So if you're expecting you're gonna get on a Harley with the Revolution Max engine and you think it's going to be, you know, something that is like snappy snap right off the line. I mean, there is some snap to it, but it's not the same. It really isn't the same. So I'll show you, see? I mean, it has some grunt, but it really wakes up in the upper revs. Holy moly. Yeah, really, really wakes up in the upper revs. So you're completely exposed on this bike. You're, you know, you're driving essentially a naked bike and there's no protection whatsoever. So just be aware of that. I don't even know how you'd put a windshield on this but it's probably not what you're going after if you're riding this it has decent roll on um so what we're like 20 so it's like 3200 rpms fifth gear i mean it, it it's there but this motor you really need it really needs to be it really needs to be wound see the difference <laughs> you know it's interesting uh when you get on this bike you it feels like it's about to wheelie but the geometry of how you're sitting uh lends itself to pushing the front tire down so <laughs> that's pretty funny <laughs> now i have this in road mode we can turn this on sport mode which i will do when we get to the back of the track uh if it's anything like the pan america the bike will wake up tremendously when we put it in to sport mode. So we're going to turn right here. Self-canceling turn signals, which is kind of cool. This is a rather sharp corner, so usually scrape peg. No, nope, didn't scrape peg. That's all right. I'll tell you what, I got some serious heat coming off my right leg. I can feel the, uh, feel the cylinder head kind of grazing my hamstring. Very nice. If you're just doing a putt-putt on this bike, it's actually tame, quite tame. Nice drivability. Suspension's a little stiff on the bumps. Again, lending to a sport bike, you've got to kind of take the pros with the cons with that one, I guess. I mean, you want to handle good, you're going to have some bumps, but no, not bad at all. Ugh. Definitely a little bumpy. Okay, the suspension's really stiff on this. I wonder if you could adjust it. So this has cruise control as well, which is kind of interesting on a Sportster, huh? I know it has heated hand grip button, but that is an option that comes from the factory and everybody gets the everybody gets the same option uh same buttons rather uh just some of the options aren't actually engaged if you will this bike is very tame if you're if you if you've got it in the lower rpms and you're just uh 
cruising along. It's actually quite, quite streetable. So it lends itself more to the cruiser feeling that Harley does. But I'll tell you, this bike's suspension is like riding a buckboard. It feels like I'm on something similar to like a Kawasaki Ninja. It definitely does not have the Harley feel to it. And that might be what they're going after with the Sportster S. They want something that's, you know, performance, that's going to drive fast, handle. But again, in the, um, I would say in the curves, it was, the bike wanted to. So here's my take on the suspension. I've been whining about it being pretty stiff. You would think if, if the bike was stiff, it would ride like the handling would just be right there. This bike has the cruiser feel to it, but the wide tires make it want to push through a corner. And I use the term flickability. It, it's difficult to whip this bike around because the, the width of the tires, especially even the front tire, it's a big tire. So it's not, it's not really conducive to the stiffness. Does that make sense? Like it's not, it should be softer, but maybe the tires are what's throwing me off. I don't know, I don't know. All right, let's, uh, we're gonna turn right up here and we'll get back onto a place we can crack it open. All right, so I'm just gonna rant about the suspension just a little bit before I hammer the power out of this thing. My tailbone has taken a huge beating on this on these back roads this bike is not suited for bumps uh, you almost you want to come off the seat just a little bit when you actually see a bump coming but the problem is you have forward facing controls so it's really difficult to do that because you really you can't put your weight fully on them because they're way forward so all right as i enjoy just to see what we can do we'll get around this dead man's corner and then we'll give her we'll give us some Here we go. First gear. Oh my word. Okay, that's fast enough. Jeez Louise. All right, this motor is like <laughs> this motor is pretty fast. This it's got almost the same power that the Pan America has, but it's such a small package, so it's just like a nuclear reactor. It's pretty awesome. Hey, let me know what you think. You ride one of these bikes. Give me your honest opinion. Again, suspension's a little stiff, but besides for that, if you were probably no taller than six two, this would be a good bike for you. If taller than that, you're going to find it is a little cramped. Talk to you soon, and as always, ride safe.